we've determined that this board, it's the audio board for the Elmo 16 CL, is dead. And where is it dead? Well, this one in particular, it seems to be just in the area of the cider lamp. So that's where the light that comes on on the projector that gives you the sound, and it's, the light doesn't come on. So um, we're going to show you how we, the first thing we did was I looked at the schematic, and uh, I'll bring this up closer on the screen. Looked at the schematic, and on the schematic, it shows that the uh, first thing that hits the power is a fuse, and then it hits the second thing it hits is the bridge rectifier. Now, a bridge rectifier converts AC to DC, and we're going to um, we're going to test that now to actually show how to test a bridge rectifier, since it's the first thing in the chain. Um, and it was the first thing I, I actually suspected because it wasn't the bulb and it wasn't the fuse and um, so the first thing I checked, checked was that so I'm going to show you how to check that to see that it is actually bad our first step is to turn on our multimeter and turn, set it to the diode setting to start we're going to put our black lead on the positive side of the bridge. It has a plus on it. And then we put our red lead on one of the AC terminals in the middle. This gives us a reading of 571. Then we switch to the other AC terminal and we've got zero. So then we take the red lead and put it on the negative side and the black lead on one of the AC terminals and we get 572. Then we check the other AC terminal and get 577. The zero reading we got should have been in the 500s so we know the bridge is bad. Now we're going to swap out the bridge rectifier on this board. Now the problem is is that the SRIRB20 is no longer in existence. You can't buy them. You can't buy a new one. So the part that we need isn't available. So what I did was I went and ordered some that meet the same specs. Now they end up being a little bit bigger and they are not ready to go. So what you'll notice is, is that I'll show a close up of the SIRB20 as well, but that is not the same at all. So what we're going to do is I've taken a little time, I've bent all the legs on this part and made it so it should fit into the slot. So we'll see how that goes. You can see there's the SIRB A20 and um, it's right there, it's this piece that's sticking up here. You can see that it's considerably different from this part. I mean, there's, they're not even close to each other as far as design goes. But they do, they do do the same thing. So let's see. I did a little bit of bending, as I said earlier. And I think that we'll be able to um, get that to work. Actually, it goes this way. So I think that'll all fit inside there. I've bent the legs in a way they should work. And to, to bend the legs, I use these angle cutters actually but they they do, they do help you make make uh, better sharper twists and turns on the thing so that's how I use to bend them the first thing to do is remove the old part so to do that I'm going to use a desoldering gun but you may have to use desoldering wick which you use by just laying there next to the soldering iron and put it on there it'll suck the solder out into the wick and there's also a soldering uh, gun that you can use like a little um, like a little gun that you can use that will suck the solder out after you heat it up with a soldering iron, um, desoldering tool. I'm going a little more high tech. I'm using a um, Hacko uh, 808, which is a big gun, and it's going to go in there and it's going to actually just suck the solder out for us. And after you remove the solder, the part literally just pulls right out. So the part's been pushed in from the other side, and I made sure that the there was one terminal's marked as plus, and one's marked as negative, 
and the two in the middle are AC. So we had to do a little bit of bending to get them in there. But you can see them all, all three, all four are all poking right through. So now I'm going to do is solder those in, and uh, we should be able to uh, go on to the next phase. So. Well, I've replaced the bridge rectifier, which is right here, and I've also replaced all the capacitors that are on the board, all the electrolytic capacitors. The other ones are probably fine. Um, and you don't have to do that, but they're, you know, they're 20 years old, so, you know, there's a tendency for them to dry out inside there. So, it was a good idea to replace them. So, um, and I haven't cut the leads yet. That's one of the things you do last. You always go, go through and solder everything on. Double check to make sure you got the but the, there's a polarity on capacitors, so you have to make sure you get them plus and minus. There's a, they're marked on the capacitor and they're marked on the board as well. So you make sure you get them right. Um, so I'm going to do all that. I'm going to cut these and then we're going to plug it in and see what happens. So it'll be interesting to see. Okay. Wish me luck. I've cut all the leads on the back of the board from the capacitors and I've put it in with two screws on each side. There's a third screw in the back, but it's hard to get to so until we're really sure it's going to work we're going to leave that one out. There comes a moment of truth in every video and that's where you actually have to test to see whether it worked or not. So here we go. There it is. It lit. So I guess we're going to have to determine whether it's going to continue to work or not. That's going to be the big question in this. So we'll see. I'm going to leave it running, see how things work and if it does, it'll be great. So there you go. That's the end of the video. So uh, there's another going to be another part that's going to explain how to put the rest of this machine back together again. But this fixed the problem, and as, as far as we hope, keep our fingers crossed. Um, everything continues to work. We'll be great. Good to go. So there we go. That's it.